This is Mark Tobias in Bergheim, Germany at Lockmasters and Wendt with Enrico Wendt, who's the operations manager uh, for the company here. And this is the follow-up to the video that we did on how high-tech thieves are stealing cars. We're going to talk today about how some of your car keys can cause you a lot of trouble if you file a fraudulent insurance claim. Um, Enrico, there's a company that you deal with that makes readers for the keyless entry car keys, correct? Yes, this is correct. And this can read a lot of data that most consumers probably are not aware that's being stored in your keys, including GPS data, where your car's been, how many miles it's driven, all kinds of maintenance information. So let's discuss, we just read out a key. Yes, that's Under correct. your program. And let's talk about all the data that came off that key. And what kind of, this was a key for? This was a key for a BMW, a brand new BMW from 2013. We can show the key here. You see, this is the newest generation from the F series. And we can read out a lot of data from this key. It's a keyless key, you see. Yep. There is no. Contacts, no, 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 no contacts, no blade, nothing. So, and with this key, keyless key, you have in the pocket, you start the car, you open the car, no problem. So, and, but we can read out a lot of data from the key. And this key, we got this key, we bought this key from eBay. Yeah. So somebody sold a key from, from a car on eBay because he lost the car right. or he sold the car. So. We see what kind of behaviors the people have with their keys. They do not care about them. Okay, but the really interesting point here, for example, this, this piece of equipment, where is this made? This piece of, of, of equipment is made in Bulgaria. Which they do a lot of automotive electronic, yes. high-tech electronics in Bulgaria yes, that, that your correct. company carries for government. Yes. So a parking lot attendant could take a piece of this gear with a laptop you park your car and leave your key with the valet or the parking yes. lot. Mm -hmm. He can read out all the data on your key, yes, that's including correct. the key code, the remote control codes. When you push the button yes. on your key fob, they each has an ID code yes. that talks to the car. If you have that code and you know the frequency, you can talk to that car, correct? Yes, that's correct. Which means you can open the car, lock the car, do whatever you want. Yes. Okay. That won't enable you to steal the car. Yeah, of course. Unless you want to make it a hard key for it. Yes. yes. And you have the transponder code. Yes. But in another video, we showed how that can be done really easily. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about all the kind of data that's in that key. Because the, the forensic laboratory that I was at yesterday, that's part of Lockmaster's group, mm -hmm. they deal with a lot of insurance companies on stolen car reports. A lot of them are fraudulent. Mm -hmm. And by reading the keys, they can determine they're fraudulent. Yes. So let's describe what kind of data we just pulled off this key with this little antenna <coughs> so that reads the key. The, the data we have is, of course, a serial number of the key and the normal number where it's saved in the car. Right. So that is the, the this VIN. Is the VIN. Yeah. So um, that we can identify this key belongs to this car. And if they, and that's the original VIN for the vehicle that's yes. all over the vehicle. If the, the, uh, the VIN number were changed in the electronic, we can also see this yeah. because the initial VIN number is always stored on the key and the current VIN number as well. So you get two VIN numbers and if these two VIN numbers are not the same, you can see that somebody changed the VIN numbers inside the car. Yeah. So then we have data like um, the first registration of the key. When this key was programmed to the car. Yep. We can read out the chassis number if the chassis number fits to the correct VIN number. We can read out the color of the car, we get the color code. And we can also read out um, the kilometer, the mileage. And Tell me about the kilometer. That's the last mileage that was recorded on the when, key. Well, it was recorded on the key. When the car starts or when the car stops? Um, when, when the car stops. Okay. And that could be relevant if you filed a stolen car report. Yes. 
and the, the numbers don't match. So, and then, um, for example, we have also the date of the last drive, when the key was used the last time. This is very interesting for the insurances. If they get, um, uh, have to do a report, what happens to a stolen car? The, the owner of the car has to send the keys to the insurance. The insurance can read it out. And if they tell him it was stolen two days ago, but yesterday the key was used from the, the owner of the car, the yeah, insurance can see well. that, that something is wrong. Yeah. So for the insurance, it's a nice tool to check or to decide, okay, do we do a report on the car and do an investigation or shall we handle it normal? Yeah. This can be a first evidence. Yeah. Okay, what else? What else do we have? We have also the, the battery voltage touch. We have the last uh, full level, how much fuel was inside the car. We have... Um, also the outside temperature of the car, which is also very interesting to see what was, out, what was the outside temperature, because we can check with the weather data, okay, how was the, the temperature outside. Right. Or if they tell us where it was stolen, we can check the GPS data and we can also check the outside temperature as well. It's also interesting, okay, Maybe he starts the car, if the car is inside a building and I start the car, the temperature will be not the same temperature like outside. So it can also give evidence of what happened to the right. car. Right. And then there's maintenance data? Pardon? <coughs> there's maintenance data. So that the maintenance people, when you take your car in, they can pull data off your key yes. for maintenance purposes. Yes. So is there anything else interesting about data that's stored in the keys. So we have, for example, we have the GPS data. They are also stored on some keys, especially on the newer BMW Q keys from 2014. They are installed on the keys, and so we can see, okay, the key was used last time with the, on this place. And we can see on Google Maps exactly where, where they stopped their car and left it. With this original key. So a wife, for example, that wanted to know where her husband was, if she had access to somebody with the box, she could read that key while he's yes. sleeping and say, where were you yesterday? Yes, that's Oh, cool. I was here. No, actually, you weren't. Yes. So that's possible also. This is also possible. So how many different brands of cars can you do this with? The GPS data at the moment, we know that it's stored on BMW, but we are sure that the other brands for the high expensive cars, that they will do it also and they will, will store their information also in future. For example, Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes, they will do this because in future the plan of the manufacturers is to save so much data as they can on the key that in future if they go to a dealer, they only have to read out the, the key and they know everything what happens to the car. Mm -hmm. This is what the manufacturer wants. That the, the manager in the workshop of the dealer, he doesn't need to touch the car to tell the customer what's wrong with it. So and that's why they start to save the data on the keys. And this is only the beginning and we, will, we know that they will be stored more information in future also on the key. The first information which was stored was 2001, 2002, they started and they only stored um, the VIN number and the, the number of the key in the slot, right. in the immobilizer. So, but now you see, now we are 10 years further or 15 years further, you see that there are now a lot of more information are stored to the car. And this will also happen in future that it will not only store the information what happened the last time, maybe we have later uh, a, a whole, longer history. A longer history. Yeah. What happened to the car, yeah. more data from the car, like the, the, like, like, um, the, the mileage, 
what happened to the mileage, how fast I was right. driving. Right. This is also just like the black box. Like the black box. Yeah. And who buys these systems? This says systems. We sell this systems at the moment to government people and to big insurance companies. So it's not a restricted system. So it's not a restricted Anybody system. Anybody can buy it. But we restricted ourselves right. to sell it only to these people. But it's not restricted from the government in Europe. And I'm sure that it's also not restricted in the US because this system is also sold in the US. So, and, um, so it's not restricted to sell it. So, and if somebody likes, everybody can buy the systems and read out the data. Yeah. And then have free access to your car. Yes. And know a lot about your driving habits. Yes. Lots of things. Enrico, thank you very much. You're welcome.